good morning so good morning amy good morning sarah uh yes. we've got uh lots and lots of people here joining and stuff um and our chat today uh is about being a makeup trainee and um hopefully uh you two will have lots and lots and lots of things to talk about mm -hmm. um so i suppose start amy really start with you know who you are and, and what you did before you did a course etc yeah uh hello um i am amy i'm 28 this year um i did the course in april last year um feels like years ago um but from then yeah before that i trained in accountancy for seven years so for an old office job um the reason i did that i came out of uni um in 2012 13 whenever it was many years ago um i did performing arts and then hated it coming out of uni so i just got a admin job in this firm um and then yeah stayed there for five years uh, they trained me up in my qualifications, didn't expect it at all, and I thought, oh, I'll go with it. Um, and then went self-employed, uh, so did that at home for a bit, and I just got really bored of, and I lost my creativity. Um, I did, I loved doing hair and makeup at, at uni, um, so the theatre side of it. So I thought, why not, why not change my life and take a big leap and do CBMA? So did that, and then I'm now here. <laughs> Lovely. And um, Sarah, what's your what, what were you doing before the course and stuff? Hello, um, I'm Sarah. Um, I'm 26. Um, I came from. I've done musical theatre my whole life and danced and sang and what and really wanted that to be my life. Really, um, I did a degree in dance and then when I came out of uni, I slipped a disc in my back, so I couldn't dance anymore, which is sad. Um, and then I was kind of in a rut. I worked in a pub. I loved my job. I loved the social side of it. Um, I love, I've had a great time, but it wasn't what I wanted to do. I didn't want to be a barmaid for the rest of my life. I've always loved makeup. I've always loved film and TV. So I just wanted to mix the two. That was kind of like, okay, what else do I really love other than musical theatre? And that was it. And then um, I wanted to do, I looked at the course for about a year and a half before doing it and just financially couldn't do it um, and then with help from my family and saving I eventually was able to do it and me and Amy did the same course in last year in January and we finished in April and then now we're here. <laughs> well um, please do everyone that's listening do um, type in questions uh, that you want to ask Amy uh, and Sarah. Um, I, I suppose I would like to as you both said that um and you both were a bit sort of from a creative background um is it important would you say to to have a creative background does it help is it important or, or what amy um I, I guess it does and i guess it doesn't it's, it's it's the way you kind of look at things and um like i said i did lose my creativity and i did find myself kind of going oh gosh what what am I doing um and I think like my first week of CBMA I was m mind blown like I, I didn't know where to start I didn't know everything kind of went blank um but yeah no I think I think it does help that you are a bit creative but I guess that's why you're going into the industry um yeah <laughs> you can almost have that creativity but be be a bit stuck like Amy said and then need something like a course where you've got so many things to do and so many options yeah they like spark your creativity again and they like bring it back up and I don't think it's vital I think you can still do it without having a really creative side but obviously hair and makeup is creative so and I think Sarah will agree that I doing the course i definitely thought i'd be better at certain things and then found out that i was not good at them or yeah. better at other things and it, it it's really great how it all comes together and you realize you're good at certain things and not others yeah i think that's that's an interesting thing i think particularly when uh, when i'm looking at it from the side and seeing um what what sometimes students think oh i'll be good at this and and they're actually kind of not but then you know they're, they're much better at other elements, particularly the hair and stuff. Um, 
let me let's run into here's lots of questions coming in um well one of the first one how did you find your way into the industry um amy let's ask that question to amy yeah um the lovely peter um helped me yeah you <laughs> um coming out of cbma there was um some work experience not paid um on the film emma um mm -hmm. that was just three days um which i jumped on because uh, it was half an hour down the road from me um where i met a, a lovely trainee called hayley um and she taught me a lot that over the three days that i was there um and i'm so glad i did it and i met a lot of because it, it was crowd room um i met a lot of people there a lot of artists that i just i just spoke to kind of introduced myself um and one of the ladies there took my number um i met to two of the girls that are on the nevers now there um yeah at the end of my three days she took my number and then kind of passed it on to other people which was lovely um and then from there i did a bit of theater work because i wanted to help with wigs um get that experience so it was just finding so that was from um cynthia when i came into ta for cbma um so it's just kind of getting your getting yourself out there introduce yourself in the right way um, and having that opportunity to don't just go, oh, I'm not getting paid for it. I'm not going to do it. Um, absolutely jump on the fact that it's you're being offered this opportunity rather than just going, no, I want to go full whack into TV and film. Just take take everything that you can um, and get to know people. Yeah. But Sarah, anything to add to that? Yeah, you definitely haven't got the luxury of picking and choosing what you want to do straight away. You just have just accept anything and anything is good anything is good experience um i was lucky and came gina blondell who does the fashion on cbma does the fashion week um i assisted her straight away and assisted her for about well up until december last year so from when i graduated up until then was just assisting her on fashion shoots and that was something i absolutely loved like i i knew i would love that and because i love fashion i love that world um and so i was really lucky that she believed in me and she well, i really got on with her still in really good um in contact with her now um and yeah, so I just did that. I did sold fashion until December and then um, went for the interview for the trainee position for the Nevers and then from January started from then. So I've been really fortunate actually. I can't thank my lucky stars that that's happened, um, but it's been really good. I mean, just to add to that, I think it's what you both said is, is, is obviously very good, important, but I think it is that, you know, like an opportunity arises, you grab it with both hands. I'm sure as you both will, will, will testify, there's, there's that fear, you know, yes, that I can't, you know, what's going to happen. Am I yeah. gonna, everyone's going to go through that, but you, you know, you, you both sort of, you deal with it, don't you? I remember yeah. my first day on um, Emma and I got there and I, I was, shocked i just didn't know what to do i i didn't know who to talk to and i nearly walked out because i it was so overwhelming mm. um and it's it's mad that when trainees go in on their first day on their first job the feeling you can't describe it <laughs> it's, it's so overwhelming you are the tiniest fish in the biggest pond in this in the whole world. <laughs> but just embrace it yeah um, one of the questions I suppose coming in quite a lot is a, a typical day. What would be a typical day, day in the life of a makeup trainee, Sarah? Um, so you're there before everyone else. <laughs> and, uh, you, first things first, you turn everything on. You make, your job is to make sure that everything is ready and raring to go for when the designer and the artist come in. Um, a tip that like, Amy actually taught me, she was like, know their coffee orders from the like the day she'd already told me their coffee and tea orders before, <laughs> they, before I started. So I was like, I know what you want. <laughs> um, yeah, get everything ready, turn everything on, um, make sure everything's clean and tidy. That would have been done the night before, but anything that say didn't, go and get that ready. Um, turn 
turning hot towels on. It sounds like such a small thing, but that's such an important job of the first job of the day. Remember that is ready to go because you don't know what point of the day you might need to de-rig someone. It's not going to be, you can't think, oh, I'll do that at the end of the day because it's not going to be until de-rig. It could happen at any time. Um, and then just, yeah, get everyone's, know what's going to happen before other people do kind of thing. Just be, look ahead of yourself. So be like 10 minutes ahead of what's going to happen even more than, um, get the call sheets ready for the day. Um, and really just have everything. So when you get asked questions of where this, what's happening today and where's this, you know, exactly what's happening. Um, and then be ready to help at any time. Be, be the pair of hands, be the extra pair of hands. Um, it, it sounds, Sarah, that, you know, even though um, it's a kind of, you know, you're the trainee, you know, yeah. the, 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 the first person, the, the first person in, uh, the youngest person. Um, but it's an important role in what you're saying, because yeah. you've got to think for everybody in the team. You yeah, know. I think that's why it's so overwhelming at first. I remember the first day I was like, I know I've got to be the first one there, but what have I got? To, how am I? Go, how am I supposed to know what to do? <laughs> this is my first day. I was so like confused by it. But obviously, people know that it's your first day, and they're going to help you, and they're going to be there for you. But it is really, it's scary. It's scary. But then you kind of have to just trust in yourself and trust that you've got that far, and you know what you're doing. You have you just don't doubt yourself. Just be like, yes, this is right. Do it. Like it's fine. Um, and then after a while you do just that ball just goes rolling and then you're just comfortable in it. But like, I mean, I mean, as Amy said, you know, the, the, you know, you was all set to, to walk out on Emma. Uh, brilliant, lovely <laughs> yeah. film, by the way, wasn't it? Um, oh yeah, and, absolutely. And, but, but, you know, you held it. So it's, you know, to telling everyone that it's completely normal to mm. be scared and, and, and fearful and just trying to learn a, a calming breathing technique. Or something. Yeah. I always, I always compare it to driving. I think when you're in at CBMA, you've got the tutors, they're telling you everything. You're like, oh yeah, I could do it. And then it's like driving. When you, you've got your instructor in the car, you're fine. But when you're out in the big wide world, you're like, oh, what am I yeah. doing? Um, absolutely. Like Sarah's um, role is a little bit different to mine with Crowdroom. It's just a bit busier. Um, mm -hmm. but, and so I still go in every day going, have I got everything right? Um, you've definitely got to be very organised. And that's one top tip that if, you, if you're not an organised person, get organised. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it is, it is scary and you're going to get things wrong. Um, and I've got lots of things wrong. But equally, it's, it's a big learning curve. Every, yeah. every day a learning curve. Everyone could expect that. I mean, now you touched on, on um, you know, so Amy... You're the trainee in the crowd room, and Sarah, you're a main team. Um, mm -hmm. Amy, tell us what what you know. Again, some people you know wouldn't possibly know what the crowd room is, or yeah. and what so the crowd. What's the crowd room, and what's your role? Let's say. Uh, so, crowd room is all our essays or extras. Um, they we it can range between. 10 essays to 500, um, which, so we have a crowd room of artists that um, we, we have to allocate out the essays to, to get them ready uh, for the day. Um, so my, my day is, is similar to Sarah's, but on a larger scale. Um, Sarah's I think is more focused on getting specific things very right. Um, ours is getting people through as quickly as we can. Obviously the looks, to be done um, and we as trainees so there's usually me and a few others um, have to make sure it's our role to make sure the artists days are perfect so it's their job to come in get the essays ready and get them out sort of thing um, so we have to do tea and coffee runs we have to make sure their stations are prepped like Sarah said um, get their breakfast for them because obviously it's not just one actor they'll be doing it's they rotate so once they've got one in the chair they're done they get out and then they cut another one comes back in um so yeah we've it's just our, our role to keep things rolling and smooth running and um it's, it's nice to have sarah because we kind of work together sometimes um to to help get the call done um 
and then after the call, yeah, it's just tidying up and getting ready for the next day, really. Are you are you the only trainee, or are there more trainees uh, in the crowd? Because it sounds very busy. It, yeah, so, so some days it's it's manic. Um, so we we had a large day in London that was three four hundred essays, um, which we had. There was six other trainees um, and a few like a few work experience people in. Um, so that was really, really handy because obviously I couldn't do it on my own. So um, we have to hand out fitting sheets in the morning, obviously, so the makeup artists know what what look they're creating. Um, yeah, so that was a large day. But if we say we had 10 essays in, I'd probably just do it on my own, um, which is fine. So, yeah, it, it can vary. <laughs> well, and I mean, do you sort of touched upon the work experience, uh, mm. which which is what you know, we do at the Academy, we sort yeah. of go and see work experience. That sounds, and, and I'm not trying to be, big it up, but it sounds, it's, it's actually quite important, isn't it? Because that's their first opportunity to really Absolutely. see what, what is going on. Yeah, definitely. And it's nice to see the first day that work experience people come in, and this must have been me, it is a very, it's wow, it's a wow moment of, okay, this is what it is. Um, and I think the first day it is very, sometimes rabbit in headlights, um, because you, you, you don't know what to do. Um, but equally, that's what I'm there for, that's what Sarah's there for. Because we've been doing it, it's nice to show people what we're doing. Um, so yeah, the work experience, it's just a, a, a couple of days to see the big picture, um, what happens step by step. Um, but yeah, I think it's a really, really good opportunity and uh, I've, I've had a lot of happy people leaving, um, saying that it's nice to see it and prepared for their next job with, if they step into a trainee role. And Sarah, Sarah you, you, so it's, it's the morning, you've, you've, you've plugged it all in, it's, everything's ready. Um, Christine and her team arrive, you know, the actors come in and start working. What, what's, what, how does your sort of happen for the rest of the day, say, in the main team? Yeah, so, um, I mean, when, when the actors come in and they're in the chair, I'm mainly I'm with Christine, just passing up at any time she needs, um, and then say she doesn't need me anymore, I'll just be a helping hand to whoever needs passing up. Um, then once the actors go and they go on to set, the team goes on to set, um, I will make sure everything's tidied. Um, if they need me on set, I'll go on set, which is really, it's fun to have on set days. Um, and then a lot of the time, the bus is my best friend. It's literally like my home. I know where everything is. I know, where, and when people come on, I'm like, don't, don't touch it without asking me. <laughs> <laughs> what are you taking? Um, so my role is to just make sure I know where everything is in case someone comes on. Um, continuity is a massive part of the day. It's really important to just keep, I kind of do it as I go. So just try and get continuity photos from set and then um, come and print them off straight away and just know, cause then you're just on top of it. And it, because it can, sometimes you can get really overwhelmed with it and it gets so confusing. And even if you're say like at the end of the day, and you're like, okay, I'll do that in the morning. And then by that point, you've got a million other jobs to do. And you're like, oh, I can't remember what photo that is. Blah, blah, blah. You have to go back through and figure it out. So it's really important to just keep on top of that and keep going. Um, a lot of just um, ad mini roles, making sure that all the girls have got their scripts up to date, um, making sure that if there's a change, a makeup change in the day, that they've got anything out that they need for that. Um, and being on call just in case I get a phone call from set we need this there's a lot of running products to and from set just can you run this down yes grab run and is speed be quick <laughs> be really quick sometimes I'm like have I, I test my running skills and I'm not a runner but, um, no, no high heels at no high yeah. heels practical <laughs> shoes practical <laughs> shoes um, yeah just being being there whenever you need to really um, what else yeah, just tide, keep tidying. And then if you've got a free moment, you can have a play around. And like sometimes I'll have little jobs to do in terms of test. One job I had a makeup test, Christine was like, I need to see if we can get this cull to go on someone's face like this. And 
I just was like, okay, I'll put it on my own face. Then I just <laughs> sent them a photo to set and I was just covered in this stuff. And they were like, good girl, you took one for the team. Like, <laughs> So there's fun things like that to do. It's fun. It's just, um, but the, I'm mainly on the bus the whole, the whole time, um, unless I'm on set. But there's a good, it's a good balance. And I never expected to go into my first trainee role and be doing a lot of hair and makeup they tell you when you're a trainee you're not going to be picking up makeup brushes you're not going to be you are just hands to help um but I've been given like a lot of opportunities more than I thought I would um this far to actually get involved and get hands on and do hair and help with makeup looks do help with bruises a lot of dirtying down that's a big big part that we do as trainees just dirty people <laughs> make people dirty which is <laughs> great really good opportunities well, that was actually as well as a question from joe um about you know do you get opportunities to do hair and makeup uh, what about the crowd room do you get a chance amy to do some hair and makeup yeah absolutely a lot of the time um charmaine is she's pushed me a lot and she's taught me a lot um i think i remember the first time when i started um with charmaine as a trainee she she went right amy put this mustache on this man and i went oh, we we did we learned it at school we did it and i I was like, okay, I just took a deep breath and I did it. And she, she's just shown me a lot. And then since then, um, obviously we moved from location to location. Um, several times I've had my own station that she's set me up, which is great. And she said to me, right, can you jump on if there's other trainees there um, helping do the call? She's given me the opportunity to jump on and, and do some of the essays. And absolutely, obviously there's days that you're not going to, be doing you're literally going to be getting people through um but i've been given so many opportunities and i've learned a lot on this um with hair with dirtying down like sarah said uh, covering tattoos um and in the crowd room you're on the days that it's quieter you do get the opportunity to go and stand next to the artists and watch what they're doing and and help with the hair help with the makeup and definitely it's not it's not just um as sarah says sometimes you think it's just admin and um like getting things done but you do you do get to do a lot of hair and makeup as well yeah people want to help you they all want to they they want to be able to build you up to go on to your next job they everyone's really encouraging and like okay let's try and get you the what like the opportunities to actually get your hands in and do stuff to make you a better artist in the long run I think, yeah, I mean, it's good. I, and I think, again, it sounds like I'm sort of bigging up the Academy, but I suppose because it is Christine Blundell, you know, mm. it's her project and her thing and, and you are her sort of graduates and stuff. Yeah. It, it, it makes sense to, to teach you, to help you along, to, you know, to push you forward, to be, then become juniors, makeup artists and yeah. go off in your own right and do things. It, it, it's kind of common sense. Um, uh, we've got a question from the lovely Anna. Hi, Anna. Uh, what are the biggest do's and don'ts you have learned as a makeup trainee? And I dare say there's a couple of other questions that came in uh, from Susan as well about set etiquette. So do's and don'ts, set etiquette, Sarah. Um, do's and don'ts. One, I think, be keen but not too keen. Yeah. Know when, know when to talk and know when not to talk is a big thing. Just in in the mornings you can sense people's tones and if it's time to have a nice catch up in the morning it's time to but if it's not and just put your head down and get on with things then it's time to do that as well you have to it, I think it's really one of the most important things is having people skills as much as you could be a terrible artist but they can teach you those things but they can't teach you how to just have standard common people skills you just need to know when's the right time to talk and when's the not and that's the same as on set be quiet be there but no be there to see if people need you so people can see where you are but don't make yourself like i'm here like da, da, da. Do, do you know what i mean there's a difference there's a big difference so i think that's a big a big thing a big that's thing. like the that's the sort of you know being a, back to being a team player yeah um, reading reading the the, the, the picture you know yeah. looking at it reading it and assessing it and and yeah sort of silently doing things almost without people 
you know, realizing yeah. rather than saying, I'm about to go and do this now. So yeah, that's, that's the thing. Using your initiative is a big do. Um, there's been times and, and it's such a good feeling as well. You feel like a, a teacher's pet, but also it's a really good feeling when you've just taken your initiative and been like, I think that'll be a really helpful thing to do. And that's mm. what normally happens. And it will be good to do that now. And then someone asks you to do it and you've already done it. And you're like, oh, I've done that. And they're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so that's a really, it's a really good feeling. So just using your initiative is a big do as well. Well, so I suppose again, it's that um, you know when you come back after you finish the course. I think someone asked, did you do the three month or the four month? Uh, forgive me, who I forgot to ask. Oh, four. Four, four. Four, four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. four month course. Um, and it's that thing of coming back on the following course, being a, a teacher's assistant now. Yeah. Like teacher's pet. We can't say teacher's pet, uh, <laughs> but it's. Again, it's that, you know, learning to, to assist uh, the, you know, the tutor, the makeup artist, designer, whoever is, is in there and observing and looking and seeing when to help, when not to do and stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, that's really important. Any, any do's and don'ts, uh, Amy? Um, yeah, no, I think Sarah's hit the nail on the head. Um, it is being there, but not being there, if you know what I mean. Read the room, definitely. Um, and not, not being over-friendly. Um, you're there to do a job and you're not like, fair enough, you might make friends on the way or whatever, but you are the trainee. You're um, you're there to help, you're there to assist. Um, and yeah, pre preparation, organisation. Um, and I think Sarah said it earlier, um, always being two steps ahead. So knowing, kind of getting to know your, um, your team. So um, having their things turned on in the morning um having their stations prepared um so i a good tip is that i've learned along the way is take photos of people's stations and how they set them up um which is a so helpful when you're moving location um so you go and set up the room um and sarah will set up the, set up what she needs to set up but it's knowing where people need their stuff um and just little things um like knowing when people like a cup of tea. Yeah. Um, so just make like, say someone wanted, you knew someone liked it at 11 o'clock, it would be there. Um, don't, I, I don't know really. Um, I think it is, it's common sense really. Um, if, if you've got the right attitude and um, the personality, I think that there's a lot of people, you're not gonna get on with everyone. Um, you're not gonna be liked by everyone, but you're there to do a job um just make the right impression but not yeah don't be overly loud um and stand out don't without standing don't out. sit around yeah. doing nothing there's always something to do don't yeah. sit there and be like i've not been asked to do anything so i'm not going to do it yeah. there's always something that you can be doing and if you've and you do get free you do get free spare minutes and those are the times where you can play around with bruises practice. and like practice on yourself just sit, sometimes i sit on the bus and i'm just practicing like just do a little bruise on my hand and just try and they're the times and they they can last for 20 seconds and then you're called to do something but they, yeah. there are those times but um yeah don't just sit around waiting to be asked to do something try and find things to do well it's, um, it's good that it's good that you can um you know let's say like there's there's literally everything's been done you've got nothing to do but and then so then like you say pick up a brush pick up yeah. a something practice and no one's going to say why are you doing that oh, no. but, you know uh, and it's and it's and it's going to look so much better than sort of sitting and, and, and the art and, the, and it's not an excuse to say oh i've got nothing to do no no absolutely and i found as well in the crowd room um people are so willing to show you things it's yeah. it, like don't be i think as a trainee initially i started out i was petrified of asking anything asking anyone anything um and Yes, you are expected to know a lot and you're expected to kind of be there, know the answer for everything. And you're not going to have the answer for everything. But um, like Sarah said, there's times that you've got, OK, I'm up to date with a lot of things. Maybe take this opportunity to learn. Um, and I've, I've been able to go and ask people to show me finger waves, to show me dirty and down everything during that time. Um, so the people that you work with aren't actually as scary as, the, as you think they're going to be. Um, they're just very willing to help you out. Massively. It's good. It's good. I'm really glad that you're both talking about dirtying down and stuff. That's a big thing that sort of Christine and I 
you know, we talk about, um, I suppose, when we set the school up, or one of the reasons was that thing of, you know, teaching, teaching people to become a makeup trainee, yeah. uh, which is what everyone is when, when they leave a, a, a makeup academy. Um, they're not going to be makeup artists or designers, regardless of how many years they, they've learned. And it's these things that you're know, learning those skills that you're going to be, um, you know, you're going to use, uh, and that's dirty and down. Um, just a very quick one. I remember <laughs> my first experience, not coming from makeup, was when Christine was on King Arthur, uh, and uh, and the, is it the cord? You know, where they stand in a circle, and and she goes round, and if it was Charmaine, oh, the lineup, the lineup, the lineup, yeah. and um, it was. Uh, it was King Arthur and it was, what was that, medieval times, 11th century, 12th century, whatever. And I was standing in front of, of a, a medieval blacksmith and I'm looking at him and I'm like, my God, he looks like a medieval blacksmith. He was so, <laughs> the dirt and grime was so yeah. really, really in there that he, he was real. Yeah. And that's just from dirty and down. He probably didn't have any makeup at all on them, you know, and a little bit of, hear something but uh, for me that was a real turning point and just like yeah. wow dirty think, um, so important christine <laughs> said to me once she said you'll never when you're watching a film you won't notice that people are dirty but you'll notice if people are clean and so that's the thing that you just yeah no matter how, like you just have to make sure that people aren't sparkling clean humans because yeah. they will <laughs> glow in the and so that's and that kind of, that really like made sense in my head when she said that to me. I was and like, oh. Sarah, you'll probably agree that um, everyone has different ways of doing it. So yeah. I thought yeah. uh, what, what we learned at school um, is completely different to what other people have shown me. So there's so many different ways. Um, and if I stood with someone in a crowd room who dirtied one person down, they, another person would do it different another day. And it's so good to see how people do it and then you kind of adapt your own way of doing it yeah and you, you do learn you you I'm a really like I'm a doer I need to do it to really sink it in but I learn so much just by watching just by standing and passing up don't just stand there and be like oh yeah chatting to someone else <laughs> be watching and be engaged and use that time because it's so vital and you'll be surprised how much you take in from that just just by watching people do things are you allowed this is one question um that i sort of ask are you allowed to like a little notepad and pen if you've got that moment of watching and to learn yeah just to sort of take notes i mean is that yeah. that's absolutely that's and i think it's i've i've learned to list in my head a lot <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, definitely. I, I say to a lot of the work experience people, write as many notes as you can, write things down. Um, yeah, jot, th jot everything down. And I, I tend to draw things. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Whatever works, I suppose, is, is the absolutely. key. Absolutely. So I just got, um, Francis is asking, are you paid as trainees? Um, yeah. Of, yeah. Yeah. Which, which obviously, yes, yes, you are. Uh, these are here's an interesting question. Um, came in just from, from Zoe. Uh, what advice would you give to trainees who are not confident in networking? Are there any tips? Which is a, a difficult, a challenging question. Mm. Kind of fake it till you make it, I think. Just <laughs> blag it. Honestly, blag <laughs> that you're confident. If you're, if you're really not, if you're, like my, I'm, my best friend is really not sociably, she doesn't like meeting new people she really scares her. Whereas I, we've kind of, whenever we go into a new situation, I'm the one that just goes in and talks to everyone. And she's like, okay, Sarah's got it. It's fine. <laughs> she's taking it. <control. laughs> but, um, and she started working in the pub I used to work in actually. And she had to, I was like, you're going to have to talk to people. Like strangers come into this place. It's a public place. You're going to have to talk to people. You're going to have to pick up the phone just pretend that you're okay and now and it's really helped her really helped her and she's like more confident in other situations so kind of just take that leap i i, I don't know otherwise how you would do it <laughs> i don't know how you would. i suppose it's le learn a technique that, yeah. that helps you along and, and and as you both said earlier i mean even you know i said even i'm petrified sometimes you know i we all get we're all terribly nervous and we all get, you know, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, you know. Um, I remember when, you know, asking, 
these makeup designers and stuff to come and to come and teach at the academy and i've never met them and and you know after the 15th text or the 15th email um still nothing and then i'll i'll do one text as a joke and then send it off and go oh my god that mm -hmm. just wasn't funny and they don't know me <laughs> oh, oh, i'm gonna die uh, and then on the 20th sort of text to back this like oh yes oh yes sorry been really busy and stuff so um i think there that's is the thing i think um don't give up like um i think a lot of a lot of these designers a lot of the artists are busy people there yeah. it's not like they're going oh god who's that who's messaged me i'm not going to message them back it's so busy um and you have got to kind of be a bit persistent with it um and kind of not let it get you down um you're gonna have knockbacks you're gonna find it hard um and it's not just we were discussing earlier so you, it's not just given to you um you've fair enough a lot of people there are is luck in the draw but i think push yourself um go out of your comfort zone um and it is a a people job you've yeah. got to get talking you've got to um become a people person unfortunately um, you have kind of there's so many people in the crew that you you don't just talk to the makeup people you need yeah. to make friends with everyone no you need to literally because they someone could just ask you can you go and ask this guy for some tape like a sound guy for some tape and you're just and if you don't if you've not introduced yourself then they're kind of like who are you asking me for a paper <laughs> kind of thing so you kind of have you do it's not just the makeup people yeah. you're talking to it's like a little family yeah like it's, it's a huge production but you've got to have you've just got to go up to people and say hi i'm amy i'm yeah. the makeup trainer who are you so i say obviously know when to go up to people and know who to go up to um yeah. uh and yeah, just be aware of who's on who's on the crew, really. Yeah, definitely. Well, I think it's back to that. You know, what I mean, in, I think we we mentioned this with Christine and uh, uh, and Tahira about you know it's a whole team of people making yeah. it. And so, as, as a makeup trainee, don't just you know yes, you've got you know in the crowd rooms 30, 40, 50 makeup artists, and, and yes, it's great networking, talking to them, but you know, talk to you know, I mean, catering, drivers, everyone Absolutely. is, everyone is important. Sound, AD, yeah. lighting people. Yeah. You never, you never know, know when you, you're going to need something from them. Yeah. Um, so even like the, you make the ADs your best friend, like you, you work very closely in running everything. So it's got to run smoothly and you, you need other people in other departments. Yeah. And the one that's, well, like, yeah, one that you think you wouldn't be that, you just think that's quite normal but the caterers yeah are getting everyone's lunch you so you're getting their breakfast their lunch there if they're if you're say five minutes late the when lunch is finished and you've been rushed off your feet and you need to just someone's been like please try and go and get me something it's really really disheartening if you can't complete a task <laughs> so if i've made friends with the caterers and and then they'll do a favour and you're like, please, please, can I have some chicken? Someone wants chicken. I need to get this chicken for someone. And they'll, people are there to help you and you want to help each other. So, yeah, caterers are a big part of it, I think. <laughs> good food as well. I think it's a big those caterers and stuff. Um, I, just a, a, a brief question from Jennifer. Uh, do you both drive and is driving an essential requirement? yes yes and yes <laughs> absolutely um you're sent out a lot to get supplies to get to go back to base anywhere and it, um especially going to location like you're getting up at three four in the morning sometimes um there's not public transport fair enough you can get a taxi but it's going to be extortionate um and it's just a nightmare if, if you haven't got a car um because it, it's i find as well it is long days it's tiring um and there's nothing better at the end of the day getting in your car and just going okay yeah, yeah breathe to myself like just have a bit of me time yeah it's, it's really important to drive really important to drive especially i live a little bit further out than of london so and all the locations there's no there's no tra public transport near the majority of the locations it's um, and at that time, like Amy said, they're not going to be running. So yeah, driving is crucial. <laughs> Partial <Yeah>. test. 
I know, I know some that don't drive. I won't mention her, Simone. Uh, but, <laughs> but it's it's doable. I mean, Stephanie, you know, Scottish stuff as we call her. Um, she's never. She's yeah. She still. I think she still doesn't drive. So and she's man and she's sort of the, the the thing of just you know taking a job. You offer her a job, she takes it. I think one was in Kettering once, and I'm like, how's she going to get there? And yeah, it was it was a cab. It was it was challenging, but but she she's a doer. That's why yeah. she thinks so well. She just she does, you know. Yeah. So it, it is important. It's very important. It's it's going to be make your life easier, isn't it? Driving. You yeah, know, definitely. Um, definitely. Now we touched on paperwork. So um, um, I think paperwork would be different for you too. So maybe Amy, kind of spreadsheets. A continuity sheet. What kind of paperwork do you have to do, Amy, in in the crowd room? Say. Uh, so um, fittings. So uh, the first six weeks of of this of the nevers was uh, fitting. So people coming in, us creating the looks, and we, we take photos of them and put um, the, these photos on a sheet with some notes from the artist, um, which are then passed out when we, on shoot days. Um, these fitting sheets are given to the SAs and then taken to the artists to recreate that look. So um, there's a lot of paperwork initially. Um, so the fittings um, with that, I tend to create spreadsheets. So I know like which facial has been fitted, wigs that have been fitted um, and ha where, where things are and whatnot. Um, and then on shoot days, it's uh, continuity. Um, yeah, and more like we have more fittings coming in. Um, yeah, mine's gone blank, but a lot of it's just continuity, keeping that going, um, because obviously we've got a lot of essays to, to manage. We have to try and get all the photos of who's been shot on. Um, yeah, I think Sarah's a little bit different. I was going to say, yeah, what, on the main team, what, what, what kind of, what do you do paperwork wise? Yeah, um, we don't have to do the fitting sheets um, for people. We... I write up the schedule for the following week so I have to make sure that the schedule is clear for everyone to see so they don't have to look through the call sheet every day. Um, so write that up for the following week, get a week ahead of yourself. Um, a lot of ordering products um, for the actors, if, they've, if the actors request any products or um, we need anything, checking stock all the time, um, printing scripts and that kind of thing is a lot of the paperwork I kind of do, just making sure everything's up to date, checking. Um, and I've been fortunate to do actually on this, on the Nevers, I've actually done a lot of script breakdown, which is really vital. And I'm really glad that I did it on the, at CVMA. I'm really, really glad that I was there and did that and actually knew how to do it because I would have been so lost because I've actually had to do it so many times since I've been on this job, which is so good that I, I'm really glad. And I said to Lisa, I was like, I'm so glad that I was there for you. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's a lot of kind of what I have to do. So not necessarily the fittings and stuff that Amy does, but more just schedules and kind of organizational stuff, just ordering, ordering products and, um, petty cash and that kind of thing. I remember I remember when we first did, you know, the script breakdown and stuff, and I, um, Lisa and Chloe, and um, I'm not sure it was Sherlock uh, or which film it was, and, you know, and Chloe was explained to me, you know, it was like a quick sort of three or four minutes, and I was blank. I'm like, I've got no idea what you're talking <laughs> about, you know, and it's only when I slowly, I mean, I, I was from the background, I had no idea that you didn't, you didn't film from scene one to scene, uh, yeah. you know, and she's going, no, no, we'll, we'll start at one and then we'll do 54 and then we'll do scene 90 and then scene 20. And then, and I was like, oh, this, this is weird. This doesn't make sense. But <laughs> once you get to know a bit more, it does make sense and stuff. Um, we've got a question from uh, Soph, Sophie or Soph, I think Sophie from Australia, I think she is. Um, how we right, you as your... my cat. <laughs> Oh, yo, no. it looks like an owl. <laughs> um, uh, how equipped does your kit need to be at this stage of being a trainee, um, Sarah? Um, it kind of have the essentials when you, before starting, you will, 
you can ask ask what is the absolute essentials i know that when we were on the calls every um teacher we had we asked what their kit essentials would be because everyone's is so different um obviously they've got the same bulk things but everyone does have their own favorite things to have in their kit um and you build it up as you go um that no one's expecting you to have everything no one wants you to go out and spend a fortune so your kit is overflowing when you get there because you don't need it either you don't need all that stuff you need your basic on set stuff what you're, what you're going to need on set um and then ask as well and th you'll have to pick up things on the way you think oh i actually do need that so i'll go and i need that quite quickly so i'll get that now but there are things that um you absolutely don't need to go and fork out on at this stage um and a lot of like we've said that people want to help you <laughs> they will let you borrow their things like use mine don't don't go and buy that yet use mine see if you like it test it out da, da, da. people people are there to help you so you don't need to have an extortionate amount of stuff at this stage at all that's nice to know amy yeah same same as sarah really i um i was quite nervous starting my first trainee job because i didn't have i just had my cbma stuff um and a few hair bits uh, and that was all I needed really it's it's kind of the basics and as as you said Sarah you you build your kit as you go um, and it's lovely because people gift you things people say to you I, I really want to help you out um, I'm getting rid of some stuff and you do build your kit that way as well um, but no absolutely I think I was nervous so I, I thought oh have I got to really invest my money and go out and buy all these palettes and all this hair stuff and no, you don't. You really don't. So just what you've got from CBMA and maybe a few few other essential bits. You definitely build as you go. I, I mean, I always say to people, you know, like we get those the discounts at, at Mac and at Ilamesco and what have you. Ever, and um, I kind of say it's kind of almost easy to go out and, and spend £200 on, on Paddy. And it looks all great. Very easy. <laughs> yeah, it is. And, and I always say, look, you know, do you know? Do a little job uh, for twenty, thirty pounds, forty pound, whatever, and buy a lipstick, and then you know, do another, you know, buy a little bit of mascara, yeah. buy, you know, just small increments and small sort of pieces and stuff. Um, brings on to the next question is from Tracy. Um, have you ever worked for free? Yes, yeah. I did yeah. films and stuff, and that's minimum budget. They they don't have any budget. Um, a lot of student films is what you need to do to gain your experience experience when you come out of the course. Um, and there, a lot of them are unpaid. But you don't, because, well, I found anyway, because I loved what I was doing and I was so happy that I was finally doing something that I really enjoyed, I was at. I don't even mind. I'm just having a really nice time. Like this is this is good. Like it's fine. And you're building your experience. And um, like we said earlier, you haven't got the luxury of being like, oh i can't i can't do that just really try and fit it in that you can do that unpaid work because it will come it will but come so but it's also the student films we always say i, I think it, it, it it's a, it is a great learning curve isn't it you you, you can yeah. see on those student films where you under even yeah the, the the worst one you've ever done is still a good learning curve you yeah. know yeah. and on student films as well it's your it's kind of the most responsibility you're going to have for like a long time in terms of the actual doing the makeup and doing the hair because you are the makeup artist in that in that um area so that's it it's good fun they're good they are good fun and everyone's kind of in that learning process because they're student films so everyone's in the same boat as well so it's good really good experience Anything, Amy, on, on the free work thing? Yeah, so, well, like I said, my, my first job from Peter was unpaid work experience, and then I went on to um, a theatre show I did was pretty much just travel expenses, um, and that was long, long days. Um, but fortunately, I had I was doing my accountancy with it, so I, I couldn't, I didn't really worry about the money on that side, and fortunately, I had that. Um, so like Sarah said, you have to do that to kind of get your foot in the door and get kind of more experience. Um, unfortunately, yes, it's, it's gutting that you're not getting paid for it, but you kind of look past it 
and go, well, this is the opportunity that I need. Um, I'm learning so much and hopefully this will progress into something more in, in later years. Yeah. Well, that's just fun. I mean, just as um, we're talking, Emily um, is, is asking that sort of balance. If, if you're doing unpaid work, you know, how do you get by financially? And as you just said, Amy, you, you're doing a part-time job. Um, and I, I'm not sure if Sarah, if, if you had your know, part-time work as well, I remember you were working. So yeah. it kind of, it, it kind of, um, that balance, isn't it? Of, you know, one thing that's always, I, I sort of say to people of, it's no good, you know, doing the, the, the course, you know, the makeup course, and then going back, let's say, Amy, to full-time accountancy and, oh, well, I'll just get some money and come back. It's that balance of, you know, dream and reality, as I say. Yeah, to people, absolutely. You know? reality is i need some money so i'm going to do accountancy or pub work whatever it's irrelevant doesn't matter yeah. and then the rest of the three or four days whatever they are is your dream of of makeup it's getting mm -hmm. that balance right isn't it i think you've got to have if, if you have that side job you've got to know that you you will drop that for your makeup and it mm -hmm. is it is a hard balance because there's days that you really don't want to turn down any trainee work or anything like that um, and yeah, Peter, it is balance, um, but you've got to get an income somehow. Um, and eventually you kind of build your way up and have that as your full-time job rather than have a, a side job. You have to take the risk as well. Like, um, I worked in a pub the whole time, well, before I started the course and then the whole time I was on the course, I was still, I was a manager at the pub. So I was working till midnight most nights and then coming into school the next day. And it was really intense but I was like it's what you want to do it's fine it's fine it's fine <laughs> and then when I came out of when I finished the course um obviously it's really scary and you're like okay back to money get that and then I was I could I could feel myself getting stuck again and I was like taking um assisting jobs and doing I was working as well but a lot of unpaid stuff so it's hard to just not get swept up by the money and then it got to the point and I was like, I've got enough to get me by for a little bit. And I fortunately have my mum and dad to help me a lot and I owe them a lot, <laughs> but they helped me. And um, I got to the point and I was like, I need to get out of this job and force myself to be like, okay, risk it, just take the risk. And fortunately for me, it has paid off. Um, and obviously I know that's not always the case and, I am very fortunate to have the help I do, but, um, and now it's completely paid off and it is my full-time job. So yeah, you do have to take the risk. But, uh, yeah, that's a good point. You do, you know, again, it's that you do have to take the risk. It's to you know, try and balance the risk out, yeah. you know, weigh the pros and cons and that, that sort of thing. Um, one question that comes up, uh, has come up a couple of times and one from uh, Jan Harvey. Hi, Jan Harvey. Um, is about portfolio and, and, is it important to have a portfolio and a website and Instagram and have you to, do you to have portfolios, websites, Instagrams and stuff like that? And have you sort of utilized and used them? Um, I don't have a website. Um, I have a, I have Instagram. I don't use it as much as I should. I, should, I, I do want to get that back up. Um, my makeup Instagram, but I don't have a website as such. And I haven't, I haven't needed it as at the moment. And because I've been assisting on a lot of, I assisted, so it's not my work kind of thing to put in your, in your portfolio. Um, that's why test shoots and stuff are really good to, if you want to build your portfolio. I haven't done that and I've been okay so far, but I know that for a lot of people it has, it is people who say it's good to have. Have you, but have you been asked for, you know, or can you show me your portfolio please, Sarah? I've not been asked that so far. Um, I mean, so. Yes, I have. Yeah. So I, I don't have, um, I don't put any of my stuff on Instagram or um, anything, but I did a job um, in August time uh, and the designer asked me to show her some of my photos. Obviously she wasn't expecting, I, I told her that uh, it was my first main team role um, as a trainee and she wasn't expecting big do's and big looks um she just wanted to see what i could do um and i think the work like the work that i've done the stuff i did at cbo i'm proud of it and i've got it um 
on my phone i've got photos of it um but it's not something that i would advertise sort of thing um when, once i kind of build my skills a bit more i probably will start putting it out there and it's probably something i need to think about but um no i haven't not for now as a trainee yeah but i think you know again is that you know we're, we're starting as a trainer you know, at the beginning as a trainee and, and and one shouldn't expect some sort of you know big portfolio uh, uh, and, and a huge volume of work and stuff um yeah. do you know what i think as well following on from sarah what you said earlier um you you can be taught a lot of these things but if you don't have the personality kind of as as yeah. meeting i know i think that that sells you more is your personality yeah and you're spend. i think that's really important because you're spending so many hours a day with these people it's really important to be able to tolerate that person for that <laughs> at that time rather than the skills you can you can teach makeup but you can't teach a personality and and being able to get on with someone you can't all you can't the skills are important i yeah. can't believe girls that uh, uh, an hour is actually we've got a couple more minutes oh, wow. my, my director here is is shouting at me um, <laughs> The last picture, uh, the last picture, the last question, um, a nice question, I, I, well, hopefully it's a nice question from Sophie Jean. Um, uh, I've no doubt you'll probably get this question at some point, but one thing I'd love to know, um, uh, why did you choose CBMA among so many highly rated schools to choose from? Um, Sarah. Um, I chose to be made when I went to visit it. I just felt really warm and welcome, um, and it just got really, really nice. I mean, I hate but like energy and <laughs> like from, <laughs> from it, and just I could feel myself being there. Like I left and I phoned my mum, and I was like. I need to come here. And she was like, right, well, we best try and find the funds then, shall we? And I was like, I have to go. And then I just had my mind set on it. Um, I didn't look at many other schools at all. I, I didn't go and visit any other schools. I looked at some online. But um, as soon as I went there, I kind of, my heart just, I had my heart set on it. And that's, I knew I wanted to go there. Um, and it was the right decision to make. Uh, Amy, anything? <laughs> Peter, I think it was you. <laughs> no, I, I remember I um I saw an advert on Facebook for it, um, and like Sarah, I, I didn't go and see any other schools, or um, and I wasn't planning on going to makeup school or anything like that. Um, so it was it was a bit of a calling, <laughs> um, and just inquired, and I think it was the response I got from you guys, the um, and the phone call me and you, Peter, had. Um, and then yeah, also going in to see it was it was nice going in for um, when the students were there, um, seeing what they were doing, and it was just amazing just to see what was going on. And I just felt a need to do it. And the fact that all the all the teachers you have, all the tutors you have, are still working, and it's all relevant yeah. stuff that you're learning. It's not like yeah. you're being taught by someone who was a makeup artist years and years and years and years and years ago that it's all dated stuff it's all relevant stuff that you're learning and they're still in the industry and it, i think that's such a huge part of it that's I such a well the um the sorry sarah uh, the intimacy so it, it yeah. was the fact that it's a small group um and you kind of get more focus on and help rather than just standing in a crowd yeah, I think it, what's lovely is hearing this, apart from obviously me being fantastic, <laughs> is um, is that it, you know it, it works. Do you know what I mean? When when you know says so you know, and then Gina got me work, and then so and so got me work, yeah. and then, you know Charmaine's there, and, and you know the tutors sort of do help, and 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 that's really nice. And it's wonderful to know that you know the skills that you are sort of taught at the academy have a point, or, or you know it, absolutely it's not kind of you know. Um, and being, you know, the team and the family thing for me is, is probably the most important part. And, mm -hmm. and sometimes we do get it wrong. You can't get it right all the time. But I think, you know, most of the time we get it right. And, uh, and we're really good to listen. But um, um, Amy and Sarah, uh, thank you so, so much. Uh, thank, you. Thank, your, thank your cat for the few minutes that uh, <laughs> you came on there. Uh, I hope you've all enjoyed it and questions. Thank you for all the questions. 
I will, some of the questions we didn't get to answer, but there's lots and lots. So we'll try and do uh, email and stuff to, to all the answers. And um, take care, everyone. And I think the next, uh, th what are, Thursday today, so on Saturday, we've got Nadia Stacey, don't forget. So all tune in uh, 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 to, to Nadia. I'm going to be talking about, obviously, the favourite film, which is 